Welcome to part 2 of this video. Now since we have modeled our system, we are going to run the load flow analysis and we are also going to check what are the different scenarios that we can analyze as far as the load flow analysis is concerned. Uh, now let's go to this tab load flow analysis. Uh, this is balanced load flow analysis where we assume that the load on each of the phases is same. So let's go on to this run load flow command and when we press it, it is showing different parameters. Here we can see that uh, by going to this monitor that is display options, we can select which parameters we want to see. Like at the moment I have selected that I want to see kilowatts and kilowatts. That is the active and reactive power in the system. Accordingly, I can also select amperes, kilowatt, kVA and amperes. So if we select kilowatts and kilowatts, that is active and reactive power, at the moment we are seeing that generator 1 is not supplying any power. That means there is some issue with the modeling of generator 1. When we go on to the written tab of generator 1, we can see that MVR limits are user defined and we have entered 00, 0 here. Also the megawatt limits are 00, 0. that's why it is not supplying any power. So if we assign MVR limits as per the capability curve and the active power limits to be 20 megawatts. And then we again run the load flow. Now we can see that this generator is supplying constant active power that is 20,000 megawatts what we have entered. If we go on and change this active power to let's say 10 megawatts. Then it will continue to supply 10 megawatts. Previously you can see that when we entered 20 megawatts. The power of this generator remained constant although there was excess power in the system. The loads only needed 18,815 amount of active power whereas the generator was supplying 20,000 kilowatts that is 20 megawatts. So the swing generator was absorbing the remaining active power which is an issue right. So Let's increase the load so that this issue does not occur. We are now increasing the load to 20 MVA and both our loads are 20 MVA. So now you can see that our load flow looks pretty decent. Generator 1 is supplying 20,000 uh, kilowatts that is 20 megawatts of active power along with 12.395 megawatts of reactive power. We go on to display option. We can individually display the active power as well. Generator 1 is supplying 20,000 megawatts. Now if load changes, let's say that this load is 22 MB. And we run the load flow analysis. Here you can see that the power of generator 1 since it is in PV mode will remain constant. Right, we can also have a look at the system currents, amperes. Like these are the currents flowing. Generator 1 is supplying 1240.6 amperes. Generator 2 is supplying 655 amperes. And this is the total system current that is almost 1900 amperes. Now, when we go on to the alert view, here we are seeing three different alerts that generator 1 the bus 5 is operating at 89.9 percent of its rated voltage it's in under voltage generator 1 is operating at 100 percent of its load and it's also over excited it is operating at 100 percent of its excitation capacity now what does this mean and how can we adjust that we can also see that the bus 3 and bus 7 are at under voltage operating at 95.7 percent of their rated capacity. So if we go on to the SLD and here we go on edit case study. 
option now this option displays different load flow this option displays different load flow parameters like here when we go into the alert mode this is showing that what are marginal alerts and what are critical alerts and it is showing that if a bus is operating at 95% it will give a marginal alert similarly under voltage if a bus for over voltage if a bus voltage is 2% above the rated voltage it will show a marginal alert and if it is 5% above the rated voltage it will show a critical alert same is the case for under voltage if i want to change like i am operating in a system which allows 10% of voltage drop there is no issue with that so i can make it as 92% operating at marginal and 90% operating at critical accordingly it will adjust the errors if we come on to the info tab you can see that what method is it using for load flow analysis at the moment we have selected adaptive newton raphson method we can also select newton raphson or fast decoupled or accelerated gauss seidel method with maximum number of iterations and the stopping criteria now coming towards the loading part this is very important for that we need to study uh, if we need to have different case studies loading part basically takes different loading and generation categories and since we saw that in the modeling part that we have different categories like there is a category for summer load and since we know that the load in our power system is, con is continuously changing majorly it is a function of temperature so since the load is changing so that means we will have different load in various seasons like summer season winter season or even we can have different load within a day at different timings of course at peak time in the evening the load profile will be high and at the off peak time the load value will be low so these are the different values that you can assign that's for example i am considering a case study of summer load so i need to select summer load and in generation category also i need to select summer load uh, at the moment we are not selecting this because we have not specified these in order to select this you need to specify the summer generation category accordingly another thing that you can do is you can use different configurations you just go to this part that is the configuration manager here you are seeing that we at the moment we have just one configuration that is normal and it is displaying all the elements that are present in this along with their status now i want to copy this configuration and create a new configuration con this way here is a summer loading summer load right and i want to specify that now generator one will not be working in voltage control mode rather generator one will be working in swing mode so i just have to save this data and now i you can see that i have two options the first one is normal and the second one is summer load so if i go on to a new uh, on to the summer load case study now you can see that generator one and let's display active and reactive powers now you can see that generator one is working in swing mode so basically you can also change the status of different breakers different lines as per their uh, operation with respect to different loading and generation categories now when i am moving towards the normal load now generator 2 will start behaving as a pv load because it is now supplying 20000 fixed megawatt fixed amount of power so you can use this using uh, adjust this by using the configuration manager you can also add or delete different load configurations
if we don't want to change the configuration of the system we just want to change the loading and generation categories that we can easily do uh, using this option that is edit case study i go into uh, this edit mode and i ask it to copy this current scenario into winter load right now you can see that there are uh, there is an option of winter load edit and when i go on to the winter load i can edit this case study and adjust the amount of loading to winter load or any load which i can define and accordingly i am also updating the generation category but the important thing is that uh, we can use here accidents winter load right but the important thing is that the mode of generation will not be changed our generators will keep working on the same mode in order for to change the mode of operation you need to go on to the configuration manager and define a diff separate configuration so that was all about uh, the basics of load flow analysis and this is our system like we are having uh, active and reactive power displayed in the system with some marginal and critical errors our generator is operating at 100 percent of its capacity that means it cannot go beyond this range uh, and since it is a pv generator so it will supply it will keep operating at this uh, value so i hope that this point is clear what are different uh, loading categories and how you can perform load flow analysis in eta in the next part we will be covering the short circuit analysis and till then it's goodbye